What's up, everybody? Jamie Shaw here with the Absolute Basketball Experience. In today's episode, we caught up with new Louisville commitment, Charles Memlin. We were able to talk about his love for Kobe Bryant, who would win in a one-on-one matchup between one, him and his dad, and what he's going to bring to the Louisville program and why Louisville was the choice for him. Before we get jump into it, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get the notifications. If you enjoyed the interview, please be sure to share it on your platforms as well. Uh, we would love to have uh, you, know, you spreading the word and everything too. Charles is an unbelievable guy, great interview, uh, very intelligent too. Uh, it was great talking to him and everything. Um, and before you get into this too, mention in the comments who your favorite all-time Louisville player is. Eager to hear from you guys as to who is your favorite all-time Louisville player. Um, but without further ado, here's our interview with Charles Menlin on the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw. Thank you. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jamie Shaw here again with the Absolute Basketball Experience. We are here with uh, new Louisville commitment, grad transfer, Charles Menlin. Charles, first off, congratulations, and how you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. Really excited. Can't wait to be part of the family. No, that's awesome. Um, it's really been awesome to watch. Obviously, I've been a fan of yours since your sophomore year in high school, going all the way up now through San Francisco. And now, uh, you know, seeing you come to this, it's just, you know, from a personal standpoint, been a blessing to see and just incredible to watch. Um, starting off real quick, basketball, it's in your blood. Dad played right. at St. John's, uncle played Division One as well. Um, your dad ended up with, where are we at, 13, 1,349 points. You're sitting at 1,271 career points. Is that <laughs> a right. conversation, a banter back and forth between you two? We've talked about it. We've talked about it. Uh, sometimes he kind of brags that because he was in the Big East, there, some of his points are worth a little bit more. So <laughs> I, uh, I made the move to see if I could get some points back. So we'll see how that works. I hear you. Well, who wins in a one-on-one -on -one game right now in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the driveway? Who, who's taking <laughs> he that? He does not want the smoke at all. I'm ready. <laughs> At all times, anytime, I, we can go. We can go. I'm ready. I hear you. No, that, that, that's awesome. No, that's cool to have him kind of leading the way like that with you and everything. Um, sure. Going all the way back to high school, this is amazing, this uh, experience for you right now, being how you're blowing up and all that kind of stuff, especially coming from where you came from. Um, yeah. In high school, I mean, you're a two-time All-State. You averaged 20, 25 points a game your junior, senior year. You played in two state championships uh, both those years, winning one of them. Why do you feel like you were overrated, overlooked, and all that kind of stuff in high school? I honestly, I wish I could tell you. I I really don't know because there it wasn't like there weren't other guys in my state that were getting looked at by yeah. the same schools that that just didn't see me. I guess part of it was that the way that I played, it wasn't one of those things where I you could recruit me to come in and be a role player just because of the way that I scored the ball and the things that I did on the court. So I guess people were just wondering if I could do the things that I was doing in high school on the same level if I got to college. I guess I think that's one of the reasons why I was overlooked that way. Sure. And then even like, did that put a chip on your shoulder? Like the way that you play and everything that you're striving for now, did that put a chip on your shoulder? Definitely. <laughs> I think more than anything, I've always had one, but when I when I see because I look I see everything you know mm -hmm. like you see all the lists you see all the other players and and all the rankings and stuff and just the way you know we, we look at the comments and on everything and yeah I I used to get so fired up especially when I get to play against people that are on those lists or I get to play a school that that didn't offer me that called and stuff like that's what gets me pumped and I'm just ready to go and this year I'm gonna be playing against a lot of those schools so it's no gonna question. be pretty fun. Well, yeah. the, the joke's on them now because after a year, you know, at Fork Union, you chose yeah. San Francisco where you had immediate success. I mean, you were WCC all freshman. Uh, what was the move like going from all the way east to all the way west? Uh, it was different. It was different. I've moved around a lot, but I've always been on the east coast. And uh, I think one of the reasons why I decided to do it was because I didn't get any of the recognition or the notoriety that I was looking for. Mm -hmm in North Carolina or like in the area that I was at. So I figured I'd try something new, see if my, my luck worked out over there. And uh, yeah, it was crazy. I just, got, I just got away from everything and, you know, kind of did my own thing out there and it worked, it worked. But yeah, it was awesome. And, and then what would you say, obviously coming from Carolina, then the year at Fork mm -hmm. Union and stuff, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make to San Francisco as a city? And then what was San Francisco as a city like? San Francisco, 
is unlike any place I've ever been in my entire life. The transition was extremely different. I mean, I, I've lived in other countries and stuff, but it felt like it wasn't in the US. It felt like I was in another one of those countries where it was just different from everything else. Definitely culture shock for sure. But uh, it was great. I got to meet so many wonderful, amazing people that are blowing up my phone right now, congratulating me. And I love it. I love it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think it helped me to definitely become more open-minded as a person and mm -hmm. uh, understand how, you know, the cultural differences still, there's still a lot of similarities with people, even though those, those cultural differences are there. Sure. Um, and then at San Francisco, I mean, you scored over 1,200 points in, in just right. three years. Uh, you know, you're conference player of the week a couple times, Lou Henson player of the week a couple times, two-time second team all WCC. What is it about your game? You alluded to it a little bit earlier. That allows you to score the ball so well and so efficiently and so just so much. Um, yeah, my I got to give a lot of credit to my dad. Uh, he he worked out, he worked me out so much and trained me so hard and I I, I wanted it. I was I was uh, I was hungry, um, but part of it was just I'm somebody who's really really meticulous when it comes to the details of the game, mm -hmm. and uh, I just want to make sure that. If I have a weakness, I attack it. I know what my weaknesses are. I mean, people aren't shy to tell me what they are either. So I'm still working on those right now too. And I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. And I just, I just want to make sure that I can score from pretty much anywhere on the court. I feel comfortable. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's just what I work on pretty much every single day. So you, you're a big Kobe Bryant fan. You, you always have been. I remember that back to, uh, to high school and everything. Um, this year started off kind of rough with that type of news. Um, yeah. how, did, how, how did you take that? How did you handle that? I didn't believe it when it first happened. I thought that, I honestly thought it was fake just because it happened literally, the news broke a few hours after LeBron passed Kobe yeah. for all time points. So I, I honestly thought that it was just a media publicity stunt or something. And then when it really started to, you know, quiet down a little bit, I was like, this really happened. I haven't been honestly that upset about something in a really really long time i i literally i cried like every single day for like two weeks i was pretty depressed honestly it was rough it was really rough because people don't understand how much uh he how much of an influence he was for me and how much he meant to me and yeah. how much like one of my goals i wrote down was that i was going to meet him and the fact that i was never able to do that was also something that really really bothered me and it's uh it still bothers me sometimes but i mean i watched i used to watch all of his highlights before every high school game every single one i remember uh there was a phenom camp or something and it was in north carolina i don't know a ton of great players there yeah. and i was playing nobody knew who i was at the time and then i i just started playing really well and everybody was chanting kobe kobe Cause I had the low hair, I had the, I had the armband and everything. That. Yeah. I mean, so many incredible memories and, and all of that, but it, it's just, yeah, that one is going to stick with me for a while. It's still kind of, kind of hurts every once in a while, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get through it. I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm trying what my was best. it about Kobe's game, Kobe's mentality that, that drew you to him initially? And then what from his, have you taken from his game and implemented it into your own? Yeah, uh, so much. Honestly, one of the reasons why he's my favorite player is just because we had so many things in common. Uh, his dad played. His dad was a really great player. Uh, his dad played in the NBA. My dad didn't. He played overseas, but he went from the NBA to overseas, and he had to live out there with him. Uh, I traveled with my dad when he was playing overseas, and that was how I fell in love with the game. We're kind of the same with him. And, um, yeah, we're both uh, come from – I mean, my parents aren't – poor at all I'm, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing pretty well I don't have, don't have anything to, to complain or worry about and um, yeah we're both I think we're both really intellectual people and kind of like to study the game we're like basketball nerds that's just yeah. the way that I look at myself and uh, I try to find like all the little technical things about why is this work why does this not work what can I do here what's this little angle how does he attack this and uh, yeah that was one thing that really stood out and then just the work ethic like unbelievable work ethic. His is way more than mine is like, and I've like, I've tried, I've really tried, I'm trying, but he's on another level. I just hear, I read the stories, I've read the articles, watch the videos and I'm like, man, I'm just trying to get to that 
that's just something the Mamba mentality is like one of those things that I've been aspiring to do or chase after and uh, it's incredible it's incredible just so many parallels but no that's awesome it's, 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 it's you know the Mamba mentality is something that I think we all try to strive after you know in our yeah. own personal way um yeah. moving forward obviously you committed to Louisville last night um, mm-hmm. They're a perennial top 15 team in the country that, you know, they return a lot of talent and should continue that run. Um, mm-hmm. What was it about the Louisville program that drew you to it and said, this is where I, this is where I, it's going to take me to the next level? Um, yeah. Uh, great question. A lot of it. And this is not to cast any purposes on any of the other options I had. I had unbelievable options and it literally, it didn't feel real. The situation that I was in, and how all these schools really, really wanted me to play, and they saw me as a top priority. It was unreal. I didn't expect it, but um, yeah. When when Louisville called, it was right after Jay Scrub declared for the draft, and he said he wasn't coming back. And I already knew who he was before. I was like, I watched his games and stuff, and uh, I was a fan of his games and everything. So when I heard that they were calling, I was like, I was a little confused because I I didn't hear about him declaring yet. So I I mean I just. I was like, it's Louisville. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to ignore their call. So I'm going to call them back. And um, yeah, I got on the phone with them. Uh, I talked to Coach Mack for a little bit and the need was there. The need was there. And I'm not somebody who's going to just chase after the big name or anything. I'm not, that stuff doesn't really do it for me. I want to go somewhere where I know I'm going to be able to play. I have an opportunity. And if I'm good enough, I get to show people what I can do. And uh, that's what he was offering me. And it's, in the best conference in the country. I get to play against all those schools that saw me and they knew who I was and all, no disrespect to them, but I feel like I'm good enough or better enough to play on those, on those teams and do those things that I've been working so hard every single day to do. So it, it was something that was almost impossible to say no to. And it was, I wasn't trying to disrespect any of the other schools cause they were on my list and everything, but it was just a timing thing and it worked out and I'm, I'm really, really excited. So. Yeah. Now talking, I guess a little bit going back about the chip on your shoulder and then all these schools who you obviously could play at that didn't recruit Mm -hmm. you. How big of a role did Louisville being in the ACC? I mean, was that, was that a big deal? That was huge for me. That was huge for me. And uh, I was talking to a few other uh, coaches because I called them before the decision was published, published uh, and everything. And I just told them, I was like, this is as great and as amazing as it is, the opportunity you guys are offering me. If someone told me that I had a chance to go back to the same place where everybody saw me and everyone knew who I was, but they just overlooked me. And I had a chance to prove to them that I could do all those things that they all doubted me on. It would kill me if I decided to go somewhere else when I had the opportunity there. And that was just what I was, what I was telling them. And, I met some great people. Hopefully those relationships yeah. last and, you know, but that was, that was just something I couldn't really say no to. I just it's that mama no mentality. To. I feel yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and it seems like throughout the process, uh, lead recruiter Dino Gaudio did a great job. Y'all have a lot of connections great and all job. that kind of stuff. Yeah. What is your relationship like with Dino? Um, you know, what's your relationship like with him? Uh, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. I, I can't say that uh, I've known him great before this whole thing happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, We've crossed, we've crossed paths a few times. Uh, he called one of my games a few years ago and uh, he coached Ish, Ish Smith, uh, which is my guy. We were on the phone for like an hour yesterday just talking about stuff and uh, I was letting him know everything that was going on. And Ish told me, you know, that he reached out and he's the one who kind of got the ball rolling for me. And, you know, I trust Ish a lot and, and he has a really great relationship with him and Coach Mack. They both recruited him when he was in high school. And yeah, I mean, I've heard nothing but great things about him and mm-hmm. I honestly cannot wait. I've seen the guards that he's produced and helped to develop and I want to be somebody on that list. And yeah, I'm really excited. So hopefully it's going to be the start of a great, great relationship and then we can, we can grow it even further. And you mentioned earlier that you know, Jay, Jay uh, declaring for the NBA and not coming back and all that kind of stuff. You kind of slid right, right. into that spot. What yeah. type of role does Louisville want you to come in to play and, and how do you foresee yourself? What do you see foresee yourself playing uh, while right. there? Um, so nothing's guaranteed at all. Um, they just told me that there was a need there and that was something that I could come in and provide. Uh, but I have to do my part too. I, I mean, I'm excited to go to Louisville, but I want Louisville to be happy that they got Charles Midland, you know? So when it, I just got to make sure I put in the work. I, uh, I'm diligent and 
I can help fill that role, that need that's there. And that's to come in, play big minutes and, you know, be a big time player, win some big time games and uh, be on that stage and make some craziness happen. I'm excited for it. Love it. Um, and Chris Mack has a track record of producing pros. Dino Gaudio, as you alluded to, yep. producing pros. With your ultimate goal being professional basketball, what type of role did their track record producing players like you yeah. to go to professional level? What, what type of role did that play? It was huge. It was unbelievable. I mean, it, it honestly felt like the perfect storm because they had everything that I was looking for. And yeah, it, that was why everything happened so fast. It was kind of like, what else am I looking for? What am I waiting for? You know, because I don't think anything else is going to change my mind in terms of what, I'm, what I need or what I want in my situation. And now it's just up to me to do what I got to do. But yeah, and I get to finish off my college career close to home, playing in North Carolina with all my family watching me and everything. It's unbelievable. It's That's unbelievable. awesome. And yeah. finally, to wrap things up, I know you're a busy man right now. You got your phone <laughs> going every which way. What do you want to tell Louisville fans? What can they expect with Charles Menlin? And, and what's your expectations moving forward this year? Yeah. Uh, so to all the Louisville fans, I don't know how many of you guys know who I am, uh, but I'm Charles Menlin. Uh played basketball in North Carolina. ACC is in my blood, and uh, I'm so, so excited to be here. And if, if you don't know me, I'm somebody who works extremely hard to be the best basketball player I can be. I want to help my teammates win games and get better, too. And I just want to make this a great year, and I want you guys to be happy that you got me. So that's, that's my message to you guys. Well, I have no doubt that that's going to happen. You, you on the court, off the court, you as a person, your personality and everything is going to be endearing to the fans for sure. I'm looking um, forward to it. I can't wait. Absolutely, man. Well, Charles, I want to thank you very much for carving out a little bit of time for us here. Um, for Charles Memlin, newest Louisville Cardinal, I'm Jamie Shaw with the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you guys very much. And there you have it. We'd like to thank future Louisville wing Charles Memlin for coming on the Absolute Basketball Experience today. Uh, we were able to kind of get, get in with him and talk about his future, his mindset, who he is as a person. Be sure that you click subscribe to this podcast. Be sure that you click, click subscribe to this YouTube channel um, and make sure that you share it across your platforms if you enjoyed the interview, if you enjoyed what Charles had to say. Um, also, in the comments below, uh, let us know what you're doing during this quarantine period um, to make sure that you stay sharp and stay in shape. Be eager to hear, uh, maybe even go through and get some ideas for myself as to how, uh, how, how you're staying on top of things. But in the meantime, Thank you very much for tuning in to the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw. We'll see you later.